get out of here. No, sir. I will make them move. Would you be kind enough to let me through? Every government has its secret service branch. America at CIA, France, Desi M. Bureau, England, MI5. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. trouble getting in through the gate, Mr. Drake. Trouble? Well, the demonstrators have a picket out there. Have they? Mr. Martin is expecting you, but at the moment he's meeting the protest committee. He asked me to bring you along in. Thought it might interest you. Put you in the picture. Dr. Bryant here is our technical advisor, and he will give you his assurance. Yes, of course I will. I've tested repeatedly. There's not the slightest that doubt in my mind. That doesn't alter the fact that my clinic received its 46th case of radiation sickness today. Dr. Leclerc, these unfortunate people have my deepest sympathy. But I must repeat that their sickness is not from a leak in the reactor. Such a leak wouldn't be a matter of mystery or conjecture, but a physical... Words, words, Dr. Bryant. Every day more men fall sick from this dreadful malady, and all you can give us is words. We should very much like to help, Sheikh Ahmed. But the reactor is not the cause of... Nonsense. You know very well that radiation sickness can only be caused by a source of radioactivity. And the only source in the area is your reactor. Your witch, Dr. Bryant, may walk around with his box of tricks and tell us there is no leak of an unseen substance through thin air. But we have our means of measuring too, Mr. Martin. We measure in sick men. You must close down your reactor. I am in complete agreement. I should expect you to be chic on it. Oh, and why? The power from this reactor will soon be pumping water, lighting homes, turning machinery. It'll change the whole of this town's economy. There'll be work and a good living for everyone. And so? Well, you'll lose all your laborers. You'll find it impossible to run your estates. You'll face ruin. That is an unworthy suggestion, Dr. Bryant. Sheikh Ahmed has never spared himself in the interests of his people. Oh, I'm sure Dr. Bryant didn't really mean... I was merely trying to point out that he has a keener interest in this matter than any of us. I disagree. As the government's representative, I am the most interested party. We shall be meeting tomorrow to discuss the matter further, and we shall then decide what to do. If you close down the reactor, your own people will suffer, Colonel. You'll be closing the door to their hopes of a better way of life. Then open your doors, Mr. Martin. Allow this committee to see over the plant. Let us satisfy ourselves that there is nothing... Just what you imagine a bunch of fanatics is going to do. Then the responsibility rests with the government, and you must leave it to us to decide what to do. Very well, Colonel Parath. Thank you, Colonel. Well, gentlemen, I have other things to do. I must warn you, Mr. Martin, that my government is almost bound to instruct you to close down the reactor. Now, if you could take some positive step to stop this sickness, well... What kind of action do you suggest, Colonel? There is no leak. How do you imagine That'll that we... will be all. Thank you, Dr. Bryant. We are taking steps to find out the cause of this radiation sickness ourselves. This is Mr. John Drake, Colonel Farrar. Mr. Drake is going to carry out investigations for us. How do you do, Mr. Drake? How do you do, Colonel? Are you a physicist, Mr. Drake? Uh, no. A biologist? No. Mr. Drake is a special agent. So you still insist that the fault lies outside your own organization? I wish you luck, Mr. Drake. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, Mr. Drake. Well, I should like to talk to some of the uh, affected people. Incidentally, are you sure that Dr. Leclerc is not mistaken in our diagnosis? 
No, she's a good physician, whatever else she may be. Well, then I think the first thing is a, a chat with her, don't you? Right. That's better. Good morning, Matron. Oh, good morning, Doctor. No, no, no. Oh, thank you. Doctor, are you absolutely certain that there could be no other disease, however rare, with exactly the same symptoms? You find me one, and I'll be quite prepared to think again. Good morning, Farsi. Did you make a blood count of the Somali woman? Yes, Doctor. You are an expert in your field. The atomic people are experts in theirs. Now, they are convinced that there is no leak. So let us suppose just for a moment that the reactor plant is not to blame. Oh, really, well, Mr. Let Drake? us just assume it for a moment. Now, that would suggest that the victims have been infected from some other source. But what and from where? There would have to be a common factor. They're all very sick. That's the one common yes. factor. I, I noticed there were no Europeans in the war just now. No. How many of them have been infected? None so far. But many Europeans work at the reactor plant. Now, how would you explain that? Very simple. Your people are wealthy, accustomed to a better diet, grow up stronger, have more resistance. Oh, do you think there's any truth in that? There could be, but none of the observations I've made so far would lead me to believe so. Mr. Drake, this is Sheik Ahmed. How do you do, Mr. Drake? How do you do? You're on the staff of the power company? Uh, no. But I saw you in the director's office today. Yes. Are there any more cases this morning? Three, in the reception ward. Disgraceful. I'll go and see them. Their families may need help. Thank you, Ahmed. And would you talk to the almoner? He tells me our food stocks are running low again. Of course, Doctor. Anything. You have only to ask. Yes. Leclerc speaking. When? How long ago? Yes. Don't move him. I'll be right over. Well, Mr. Drake, we have our first European victim. Hello, we've come to see Mr. Johnson. Oh, please come in. Thank you very much. You'll find him upstairs, the back room. You will be taking him away, won't you? Perhaps. Is he your husband? No, indeed, he is not, young woman. Are you here again? Good morning, Mrs. Parks. Uh, would you be the physician, sir? No, the lady here is Dr. Leclerc. Good morning, madam. The master is in the most distressing circumstances. His respiration is weak, his pulse is irregular, he has pains in his head and a looseness in his stomach. I see. Thank you. Would you take me to him? The master is a great man, and like many great men, is a coward. Uh, physically, you understand, not mentally. I quite understand. I won't say anything to distress you. What's your name? Uh, Sadi, sir. All right, Sadie, shall we go and see your master now? Yes, sir. Good. Master, you must wake. There's a lady physician here. I have told her your symptoms, and she says you have nothing to fear. Just lie still. Notice that you call him the master, not my master. That is true, sir. Mr. Yonsi is a professor at the University of Oxford. He has held the chair for literature at the University of Cairo. He's retired. And now, as you see, he lives in poverty. So you have no pension? No, sir. He did not retire altogether in his own accord. They say he had a weakness. It was a bottle. But other great men of us. Yes, of course. Uh, why do you call him master? He teaches me all he knows. Does he ever go out? He used to go to his club, but since he's had no money, he stays at home. What does he eat? Very little. I get him all I can, but you understand I'm very poor as so well. So you feed him? He, it is nothing. He feeds my mind. What do you give him? Bread. Meat is hard to get. Sometimes rice, but mostly bread. What's he eaten in the last week? Only bread. Where'd you get it? From a friend. Where'd your friend get it? I do not know. You must find him and ask him, mustn't you? I can't. Why not? Because he has gone away. Come on, Mason.
Finish my doctor. Yes. An ambulance will call for the master, Sadi. You will stay with him until it arrives. I will go with him to the hospital? No, you can't do that, but if you like to call in the mornings and ask for me, I will tell you how he's doing. <laughs> Steals the bread. Where from? The baker's on the souk. Arab quarters. That's right. What are you seeking, Effendi? A loaf of bread. Ah, uh, then you, you are very hard to please. I watched you visit every stall in the market. What is that machine? Oh, this, uh, this tells me about the quality of the bread. Does he tell you that that rogue Hassam's bread is underweight? No, it doesn't tell me. Uh, that. Then you should leave your machine at home, Effendi, and use your eyes. There, you see. <laughs> Why does the machine make that noise? It tells me it is good bread. Oh, then it speaks the truth. <laughs> I'll buy it. Would you put it in here for me, please? Thank you. Now, can you tell me where I can find the man who baked it? Uh, his name is Moham, sir. That is his door there. Thank you very much. I'm looking for the man called Moham. And you found him. And if it's about my debt to the Anglo-American bank, I... Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Uh, this was made by you, was it not? Oh. Oh, yes, yes, it's fine bread, most excellent quality. You like bread, Effendi? Oh, yes, it fascinates me. <laughs> My congratulations, you have a good eye. This is indeed fine quality, the, the best in our wadi. Observe the thick brown crust, undulating the thin golden skin that dissolves at the touch of the lips. Ah, oh, the richness Do of you it. you bake all your bread here? Oh, yes, myself and the boy, but, but he was taken ill yesterday. I suppose you're very careful where you buy your flour. Oh, I buy the best I can. Now, those loaves, they're poor quality, but that one, this is a different matter. Well, uh, what flour is this made from? Well, else but from the mills of the sheik himself. Sheik Ahmed? No less. Uh, can I see some of that flour? It, uh, no, I, I've used it all up. You look very fit. <laughs> I am indeed. I suppose you enjoy the, the goodness of your own cooking. Oh, alas, no. My, my wives don't like me too fat. I have three wives, and each more demanding than the last. You have many wives, Effendi? No, not many. Ah, you're a wise man. Thank you very much for your help. It's very kind of you. <laughs> not at all. I, I enjoyed our little chat. Bye, thank you. Such a pleasant change to speak without interruption. But Sheikh Ahmed's estates are way up to the north. Nevertheless, the grain that was made from was radioactive. But not contaminated by our reactor. You have to dispose of a great deal of radioactive waste, do you not? Yes. It's buried in an isolated area here. Yes, and that isolated area drains away to the north, does it not? Yes, it does. Now, supposing this waste came into contact with an underground stream which fed one of the Sheikh's wells from which he irrigates... Mr. Drake, we are scientists, not idiots. When we sink a shaft for the disposal of waste, we do not cite it in an underground stream. No, of course not. Uh, are you certain there couldn't have been a mistake? Yes, Mr. Drake. Mr. Drake, now you have a sample of water from each of my wells. And tell me, why should you suspect the contamination comes from my estate? Was I singled out because I'm a member of the protest committee? No, we're inspecting the whole area. It will take you a lifetime. Shall I tell you where the search will end? At the reactor plant? Oh, that may be. In the meantime, we'd like permission to inspect your estates. I will give my permission with pleasure. There is just one stipulation, that I and my committee should be allowed to view the reactor plant first. Uh, no, thank you. I I'm sorry, but that's outside my jurisdiction. Then I'm afraid I can't help you, Mr. Drake. 
We must be fair about this, mustn't we? Ahmed, as a favor to me. I'm sorry, Doctor. This is a matter of principle. Uh, and we, we wouldn't dream of outraging a, a principle. Thank you very much. I saw the gentleman in question. He wouldn't allow me to inspect his estates. I don't suppose you can blame him. Uh, couldn't the police organize the search? He's a very powerful man. Yes, but you have the loaf when it was made from his flour, was it not? The loaf has gone. It's been stolen. How did that happen? Just a minute. Yes, come. Yes? Sheikh Ahmed sends his apologies, sir. He feels that he was ungracious to refuse you permission to inspect the estates. He asks that you should forgive him and suggests that you come now, sir. This time? Oh, he's most anxious to put things right as soon as possible, sir. In that case, I won't refuse his generous offer. I'll call you back later. Let's go on our way. Where are you taking me? Sheikh Ahmed thought you would like to see the mills first. Why the mills in particular? Evidently, there's some question of contaminated flour. Oh, really? You didn't know. Ah, here are the mill gates. Where's he after? Oh, he'll meet us at the other gate. They can't have got my message. The door is locked. Uh, never mind. The watchman has the key. I will go and get it. I won't be a moment. be with you and with you my friend you are lost no it is not safe for strangers to walk here alone at night peace be with you no, i would not go that way if i were you my friend you might run into danger it looks as though i've run into danger already <laughs> to you. I waited, but you disappeared. But not permanently. Where are you going? I'm going to see Sheikh Ahmed. Oh, but it's late. I'm not sure that well, you wish to be him, shall we? Why, Mr. Drake? Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry you didn't avail yourself of my offer to inspect my mills. My secretary tells me that he took you as far as the gate, but you disappeared while he was fetching the key. That's right. What happened, Mr. Drake? I couldn't wait. I was afraid you might have been involved in the brawl. When I returned, there were two wounded men lying in the street. It's just as well I left then, wasn't it? But we are forgetting our manners. Hashid, we have not offered Mr. Drake coffee. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you. The law of hospitality demands it. Oh, incidentally, Sheikh Ahmed, why did you want me to inspect your mills particularly? I asked to see the whole estate, didn't I? Because the rumor is being put about that my flower is radioactive. Really, Mr. Drake, if your people can't think up a more well, convincing it, it story than that. It's not a rumor. You see, the sickness is being spread by loaves baked from your flower. You expect me to believe that? 
Where are these loaves? I should be most interested to see one. Wasn't that one over there? Huh? I hope not, Mr. Drake. I've just been eating it. <laughs> Do you um, understand the seriousness of all this? No. But I understand your tactics, Mr. Drake. You wish to shift the blame from the reactor company onto me. So, you find that bread baked from my flour is radioactive. Can you produce one of these loaves? Oh, now, come now. We don't have to fence with each other, do we, Sheikh Ahmed? Tomorrow, I'll arrange with the company to inspect your property, and if they find that it has been contaminated, then, of course, you will have to abandon it. Abandon it? For four or five years until they consider it fit for cultivation again. That would be a tragedy. You don't seem to take it very seriously. I find it hard to. You know, I would have thought that you would have been concerned not only about the safety of others, but also about your own very real personal danger. Personal danger? To your health. You may have been exposed to a dangerous amount of radiation. But then you look fit enough, and uh, I suppose you haven't experienced any of the symptoms, have you? Symptoms? No, no. Sweating of the palms, headaches, uh, weariness of the limbs. No, no. Are you feeling all right? You look a little feverish. No, no, I'm tired, that's all. Oh, then I mustn't keep you from your bed. Uh, I'll say good night to you, sir. But, Mr. Drake, yes. nothing, it's nothing. Oh, good Please, night, then. go with you. My arms, legs, quick, I can hardly move them. She comes. Yes, yes, I know, but I've been delayed. I'll come as soon as I can. Your legs, high fever, yes. Very well, I'll come over. As soon as I can. He's terrified, poor man. How long will it last? How much you'll give him? The whole lot. Poor Ahmed. I hope you haven't made a mistake, Mr. Drake. It would be a very cruel trick. It's no more than he deserves. I'm going to him now. All right, but remember that you have to play it my way, won't you? Up to you, Doctor. I'm a sick man. A very sick man, I tell you. But the core couldn't have leaked. I am enough the living proof that it has. But it was safely shielded. Perhaps your men have... No, my men have me to the letter. Dr. Leclerc. Send her in at once. And you, get back in there. Oh, Doctor, at last. I hope you've come in time. Well? There are some questions I have to ask before I can allow the doctor to treat you. Questions? I'm dying. All right, then answer them quickly. Now, the radiation sickness was spread by loaves made with your flour. We found one of those loaves. It was stolen shortly after your men tried to kill me. You're talking in riddles. Doctor, I beg you. Then let me interpret for you. You resented the reactor because you knew that it could ruin you. You spread the sickness to stir up popular feeling against the power company. Send in my guard. You paid an accomplice within the power company. He supplied you with radioactive core. You keep it somewhere here. Every time you wish to promote a new scare, you pollute another bag of flour and sell it. Doctor, you don't believe him. I think perhaps I do. You will start treating me immediately. Are you threatening me? Yes, Doctor, I am. You can't tell me to do anything. You have not much time, Sheik Ahmed. Now, where is the core? Uh, in the office, above the mill. Who is your accomplice? Finch. Finch, come out here. Finch. Now, for mercy's sake, help me, Doctor. Drink this. You're not going to give me an injection? Nope. Drink. Why not? Because you're not suffering from radiation sickness. But how do you know? How can you tell? Because the pains you feel are caused by a drug which I tipped into your coffee. You! You soon feel better. Then there was nothing wrong with me? No. All this was just a trick? Yes, just a trick. Good night, Sheik Ahmed. No! You are not leaving, Mr. Drake. No, you, Doctor. You should not have forced my secret from me. You betrayed me. Take them away. What are you going to do? What can I do? You must be joking. It's no joke, Mr. Drake, isn't it? Colonel Farrar, Colonel Farrar, you can come on in now. We have your message, Mr. Drake. You're We're coming in. Yes,